welcome to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry here on the mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. My name's Ian Horner, and joining me today, as is often the case on these cooking streams, <gasps> it's Kathleen! It's me! We're here to do fun and delicious things. Yeah, and, uh, and not dangerous at all. No, I mean, this is a very safe thing that I'm making. Mm. Yeah, so we were, uh, we're, it's holiday times, and so we thought, why, what better time for us to share some holiday recipes? That's right. We should have put a poinsettia on set like that we did last year. would have year. been a great idea. Oh, I can hear the bacon crisping up already. This oh, is going to be good. So, uh, what are you making today? Well, I decided, Ian, that I wanted to make something that was easy, cheap, and I'm softening butter, so I need hot water for this recipe, so I have a container, a mini loaf pan. I'm getting to that, and I've just got a stick of butter in here softening. Easy, cheap, and delicious, and suitable for gifting. In mm -hmm. fact, I will, once they're cool, I'll pop them out of the pans and show people how to wrap them up all nice so they look amazing. Mm -hmm. But I'm making uh, miniature gingerbread loaves, which is just gingerbread loaf, but you can get, I got these at the grocery store. I think they're six or seven dollars each. Uh, these little miniature nonstick pans, and making something smaller always makes it look cuter <laughs> and more valuable. Concentrates the flavor, too. And also, like, uh, all of the ingredients for this gingerbread, and there's more than, like, I could make probably two or three loaves with the amount of ingredients that I bought. Uh, all of the ingredients cost me, like, $9, and uh, I believe one loaf should uh, make four miniature loaves. So your cost per unit of gift is very low. That so is. if you, if you want to make something for neighbors or coworkers or something, you could change the flour and make it gluten-free. The recipe scales up and down pretty nicely, then? Pretty much, yeah. That's good. I've made this once before. I made it last year, and it was actually great. Uh, and uh, the best thing to do with this is you uh, take the gingerbread, and then you let it, if you don't eat it all and it gets starts to get a little stale, you turn it into French toast, Ooh, gingerbread French toast. That would be very nice. It was right? very decadent. Yes. So. And you've done, as I said, you've done this recipe before. Yes. Which is, I, I mentioned only because I am do, working on a recipe that I have not tried before this time. Um, oh. this week I'm going to be making... Uh, Pierogies. Christmas pierogies. I uh, love a good pierogi. Yeah, this this uh, recipe was submitted by uh, one of our mods in the chat, Sarah Serinde, and uh, this is the uh, this is the recipe that her Lithuanian grandmother makes. Uh, they, they made every year, and uh, they don't get have grandma's help anymore, but they still make them on a yearly basis, and the process is an evolving one, but she sent out the... Uh, it's printed on a laser printer, so it looks very dark, but... Uh, Handwritten instructions on index cards. Remember when that used to be how you trade recipes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we I've still been, have some index cards I've floating around my house somewhere. Told that I am happy to re to uh, have this shared with me, grease stains and all. Aww. So it's going to be an exciting, uh, exciting test on this. Super Giraffe says that he made egg or they made eggnog. Sorry, after last year's stream and it went over great with their friends. So mm. they're excited for this. Awesome. I'm gr great. I'm very glad. Uh, you know, the best part about this too, uh, they give instructions on three different types of pierogi fillings. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, ricotta and cheese, cottage cheese, potato filling, and uh, the last one is sauerkraut. I decided not to try sauerkraut this time. Just they have the can of sauerkraut at the office. Oh though. no! I thought it was. I thought it had gone. <laughs> no. But <laughs> given that how much uh, we're going to be we'll making, that. I thought maybe we should just uh, maybe just stick it to two. And given that uh, apparently they haven't tried, Sarah hasn't tried the potato filling. I thought I might give that a try because I had some leftover mashed potatoes from a meal earlier in the week and figured, hey, why not? Perfect. Yeah. So we've already, in the, in, the, in the tradition of great TV chefs everywhere, mm -hmm. we've already prepared something ahead of time that's making our office smell great. What, what did you prepare ahead of time? Ian? Well, if you're going to have pierogies, Kathleen, you have to have bacon. It's, I mean, you don't have to by law, but I mean, just really by the law of food. You yeah. really, really should have bacon if you can yeah. and if you or enjoy bacon. If, if that's your jam. Mm -hmm. If it's not your jam, don't. No. I but don't feel bad about it. The reason I'm, I'm cooking the bacon here, we started it before the show, but I want to point out the best way to make bacon, yes. which is in an oven. Mm -hmm. It will not spit. It doesn't spray. It keeps your stove nice and clean. Mm -hmm. And hopefully your oven is self-cleaning and then you can just clean it that way. But it doesn't really spit in there anyway. Easy to do. Take your pa your pan, lay out down a sheet of parchment paper, or tin foil in a pinch. Or tin foil. Yeah. Put down your bacon, lay it out in strips. You know, don't let them overlap, but also make sure that they are flat to start with. 
then put them in, and I can't stress this enough, a cold oven. Do not preheat your oven to make your bacon. Put your bacon in, set your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, mm. and then set a timer for 20 minutes. And that should be about the amount of time. Every oven is different. Mine at home takes about 25 minutes before the bacon comes out nice and crispy. Well, it also depends on like the thickness of your pan and exactly. stuff like that. So you know, There's a lot of variables, but you start at 20 minutes, and that's when you go back to check. And yeah. then add or subtract time as necessary. And we are seven minutes away from getting our 20-minute timer on our bacon, and I think that's going to be exactly where we need to be. That sounds great. Let me go over everything. So if you want to make this gingerbread recipe, you can do what I did last year, which is Google spiced gingerbread recipe, spiced gingerbread loaf recipe, and open and make the first link. So uh, <laughs> that's so mine is from a website called Sally's Baking Addiction, which unlike now, if you've ever Googled a recipe before, you will notice, Ian, you've noticed this, there'll be like nine to 12 pages of biographical diary entries. Oh yeah, there's a story about this. And yeah, to, so you have to scroll past a lot of ads and maybe accidentally click on an Amazon affiliate code mm -hmm. uh, before you can get to the good stuff, but this one is not so bad. Uh, but uh, to briefly run, by, run through the ingredients that you will need to make this, you can Google Sally's Baking Addiction Spiced Gingerbread Loaf. Uh, you will need flour, which I got from Bulk Barn because it's very cheap. You will need baking soda, which I also got from Bulk Barn. You will, I'm very tired. You will need some brown sugar. Guess where this came from. <laughs> I mean, I have some at home, but I didn't feel like hauling half my pantry out. A pinch here. to a pound. Yeah, you need some ground ginger. Delicious. You need some ground cloves. Fragrant. Oh. And you need some ground cinnamon. If you... If you're maybe like, this seems like it's a little spicy for me, you could probably just do it with the ginger and the cinnamon. Because the cloves are a lot, but cloves are delicious. Mm -hmm. And so, but if you're not a clove fan, the recipe also calls for a quarter teaspoon of black pepper for Ooh. extra spice. Uh, and vanilla, which I didn't get because it's very expensive and oh, I didn't bring mine from home. Darn it, yeah. So that's okay. You could do it without. It's not going to make or break your recipe. Now, and what's that? This is uh, fancy unsulfured molasses. Mm. Specifically, fancy is part of the word. That's not just you ascribing no, that's, it. No, that's, de that's the description is fancy molasses. Uh, double bag for security, or, <laughs> uh, for security. And some hot water to help thin out your molasses. The recipe also calls for an egg, one egg, and, half a, and a stick of butter, which is this. That's half a cup. If you don't buy your butter in sticks, soften to room temperature and a uh, pinch of salt, and I was running out of salt, so I got myself some of this nice pink Himalayan sea salt, uh, which was by far the most expensive thing I bought, Fancy. was this little bag of salt. Uh, the other thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna get your little mini loaf pans, and you're gonna be very fancy and clever, and you're gonna get parchment paper, and you're gonna do like a little like liner on the side so it's easy to get your loaves mm, out, yep. and which is just like a cutting thing, honestly. Oh, origami. Sort of. But it will make your life easier, so I recommend you do it. And I recommend that you don't have the end of your uh, parchment paper box explode like I did. But now that I'm at the office, there's going to be lo there's lots of tape around, and I can finally fix this. <laughs> All right. While you're doing that, I'll run down the ingredients here for the pierogies, which sure. are pretty simple, actually. For the dough, you're going to need two eggs. A yeah. So, got my egg here. It's protective shell. Seems good. Uh, half a cup of oil, one and a half cups of warm water, a tablespoon of salt, and five cups of flour. That's what it takes to make the shells of the pierogi. However, do note that that will that will net you seventy-two to eighty-four pierogies. Holy, holy moly! So we're not doing that. We're gonna have that, you right? You bet. Uh, Sarah mentioned in her pre in her uh, rather long preamble before the recipe happened. Actually, it is apparently mandatory. Uh, they like to do two thirds of the recipe for their family, and <coughs> even that nets them two to three days of leftovers afterwards. So, having the recipe, I think, is going to be uh, necessary for the cottage cheese filling. We will need cottage cheese, the aforementioned cheese, in the amounts of a. One third of a cup, one third of a cup ricotta cheese, a half teaspoon of salt, 
and one egg beaten. Ooh. Well, I may have to borrow one of your eggs. I'm oh. glad you brought extras. Oh, does your did yours crack? No, I need one for the uh, for the filling in addition to the. Well, I brought six eggs. Second Hooray. corner. Uh, that's the smallest amount. Of, if I hadn't been able to buy one egg, I would have. And then what? Then what would have happened? We would have been screwed. Terrible. So how did? Hold on. Let me just go back over what I'm doing here. So I've got my loaf pan, and this works with whatever size pan you're going to use. Uh, so basically, just sort of lay out your paper over top and guesstimate. And the thing is, the pans typically flare out. So just sort of get, like if you were to measure it like this across the top, you can see that I've got this like extra space. But because they flare out, when you tuck it into the bottom, it actually fits perfectly. I don't know if you can see that. There's, yeah. And I'll like, it doesn't creep up the sides. That's all you need. It's just like these little flaps coming out of the other side. So you sort of measure out your pa parchment paper, and then you can cut it in half for these tiny loaf pans and then fold it over to make sure it's all cut in half. And it's really straightforward and simple, but it will save you a lot of time. And uh, like, I realize these are nonstick pans, but anything can be improved. Like parchment paper is a great tool for baking and almost anything can be improved by parchment paper. You don't need it, it can be expensive. You can make do with tin foil, you can make do with butter and flour, but this is easier and faster, oh. so I recommend you just do this. It's one of my favorite inventions. Ever yeah. since I discovered parchment paper, it changed the amount of things that I bake as well as what I bake. The only thing is you do have to be careful. The parchment paper, you cannot go above 425 with it. Mm. But when do you bake above 425 anyhow? Not often. I mean, sometimes, but just Kit be cats. aware. Kit Kats? You need to bake Kit Kats above 425. Oh, bacon is hella ready. Looking crispy there, Ian. It's, uh, yeah, this may have been gone a little far, actually. What's wrong with a good crispy bacon? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Okay. Oh, ho, wow. We got those out just in time because that is going to be some extra crispy bacon there. What I also wish that I'd done is brought in a... Oh, you know what? We'll just use this jar. Okay, and I'm going to leave that on for you, Kathleen. Kevin, what uh, temperature do your... Uh your loaves bake at? Let me just double check. I believe it's the most boring thing. Uh, it's 350. 350? Let me reset the oven for you. And that should reheat. Okay, I'm going to take a second here to pour this baking grease out. I don't want to waste that. Oops. Timer is done. Okay. grease is half the reason to make bacon and you can cook other things in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there we go I've become a bit of a skilled person in terms of getting my grease off the pan without removing the bacon first Towel dab there on top. Get some extra grease off there. All right, that looks good. Keep that for later. All right. So, what is step one for? Well, for my step one is combining my dry ingredients. Okay. So I'm going to start working on that. It's very straightforward. I dry, dude, according to this recipe, flour, baking soda, ginger, cinnamon, cloves, salt, and pepper until combined in a medium bowl, which is what I have here. Drink. Two cups of flour. Yeah. Tablespoon of salt and 2.5. Okay, so turning this recipe in to half. Uh, the other thing that Sarah mentioned is that the amounts on this recipe are all very 
pastry uh, variable. Yeah, it's one of them old timey recipes when it was just sort of yep. like, yeah, a cup is the cup that uh, it's like my favorite cup with the blue flowers. You know, that's that's the one cup measure because yeah. that's one cup that I own. When it says teaspoon here of uh, of filling, I assume they mean a teaspoon, not a a codified teaspoon. Oh Lord, no! Because yeah. that would be too small. All right, let's start with, we want to beat egg with oil until light in color, add warm water plus salt. Okay. Well, uh, I uh, boiled the kettle earlier, so I have warm water here ooh, on the go. Great. Is that... It might be a little hot. Well, I also brought, because I know it's one of those things I always forget to do whenever we do one of these shows, I brought a container of water. Oh. We really should have talked to each other ahead of time, Ian. <laughs> I think we just all remember the previous episodes. All right. Now, it's going to ask you, it's asking you to beat this. But we don't have a beater, do we? No. In fact, I asked you about bringing a beater. So I'm going to have to, I'm, in, in the olden days, our grandmothers didn't have beaters. They no. had spoons and they had to use elbow grease. Do we, can we get a fork though, actually? That would be... All right. Perfect. One teaspoon baking soda. Done. One and a half teaspoons ground ginger, one and a half teaspoons ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon ground cloves. Those cloves are powerful. Do you have a quarter teaspoon measure? I you do. do. It's good. Like, it smells like cloves over here already. Have you noticed, Ian? There, there's nothing that's going to stop those cloves from... Feeling good. Wow. I put shell in my egg. I haven't done that since I was a child. Thank you. There's your quarter teaspoon measure back. Perfect. All right. Where is my... I got one egg. We're going to need a quarter cup of oil. Get out the fancy stuff. So, I'm not much of a baker. I'm more of a... I'm more of a, a chef, and baking is supposed to be a very exact science, but I don't have half teaspoon measure here, but it's cinnamon and ginger, so I'm just going to eyeball it, because the worst thing that happens is it's a little bit spicier, and or a little less spicy, so... Either way. Like, it will be fine. It's not going to be... It's going to it's, be edible. Yeah, it's not... This is, like, this is not going to destroy the ratio of flavor in here. I am really disappointed in myself because I found a second shell. Wow. I am just not on it's my plate It's the nerves today. of cooking on camera, Ian. That must be it. That has to be it. All right, let's whisk this until light. Quarter teaspoon of salt and an eighth teaspoon of fresh black pepper. Or, in this case, I'm going back to this quarter teaspoon again. Go right ahead. Oops. There we go. I think that's the color that we want. And we want a half tablespoon of salt. Get back in there. How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Uh, three. Well, there we go. I'll just need half of the three. One, two, three. Because yep. it's 15 mils to a tablespoon, five mils is a teaspoon. I've never learned those conversions. But that means I'm using I'll... fancy Himalayan pink salt. I'm using table salt. Well, I, like I said, I need to buy salt anyhow. <laughs> My pinch bowl of salt was 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 emptying rapidly, so I, I was like, oh. I considered bringing in my my, my salt uh, cellar, and then decided now we'll bring in the utility salt. All right. So now I'm going to mix all of my spices into my flour. That concludes the most of most of the stuff here. Hooray! Off we go. Look at that clean workspace. Now, 
we put this away and move on to the more exciting wet ingredients. <laughs> so, in a large bowl, using a handheld or stand mixer, womp womp, Oops. or some elbow grease and a spatula, uh, beat the butter in high speed until it's smooth and creamy, about a minute, or however long this takes. I have some softened butter. Uh, if your butter is not soft and you don't have time to leave it out, you can do what I do, which is sort of place it on a indirect heat source to soften up, and it works really well. Don't be too hasty about it. Turn frequently, uh, because butter does melt easily. Mm -hmm. okay. Goodbye, my greasy son. that out of there and I'm going to use a... Do you have a paper towel? Yes, I do. I brought a roll because, again, remembering previous episodes. Oh, you're episodes. so smart. All right, now I can get the butter off my hands. All right, <laughs> let's mix up some butter. And then once that's creamy, I can, uh, I can beat in the egg and the vanilla extract, or which we're not using. I can beat in the, uh, I can beat in the egg. So and uh, then my brown sugar. Ah, the good old days. A simpler time when people would die of diseases that were easily present preventable and you have to have nine children when it was illegal to do most things that were fun. Well, for the mo for most people. Oh, I guess if you're a white man, it was never illegal to do things that you enjoyed. Uh, land owning. That's true. That's the key. I feel like everybody in this room would suffer if we went back to an old-timey thing. Hell, well... Yeah, no, we, we would. The first moment we want to check Twitter, I think, is when we'd notice. I was just thinking about the oppression. Mm. <laughs> what, you, what, you mean by looking at Twitter? Anyhow. So, uh, Kathleen, Ian's imagining as hard as he can. Just leave it. Uh... See, when people are like, wouldn't it be fun to do some sort of like fantasy role play thing and go back to the old times? And I'm like, no, now you're just you're just pitching me on Handmaid's Tale, but with more religion somehow. No. <laughs> All right. I only need two more scoops of flour. I think we'll be very close to actually getting this dough nicely made. want to knead it well. All right, my recipe calls for an egg, which I'm going to mix in because there's only so much work I can do with butter. And I'm going to have a mix of egg and butter at the end of the day. And that's the important thing. Like, you know what? I don't think people should beat themselves up if maybe their shit doesn't turn out right. Ugh. Everything's okay. Yep. This is, we're all here to make mistakes. Do the best you can with the tools that you have on hand. I'll be here mixing butter and egg for the next 90 minutes, <laughs> giving myself carpal tunnel. Ooh, this dough is coming together. Oh, I'm so excited. Hey, that looks like dough. Yeah, one more half cup and maybe a bit more to firm it up and we'll be delicious. I see what you did there and I don't approve. Yeah, that won't be the last one. There we go. Hmm. Maybe I should come in and do my pizza recipe on air if I haven't already. Or the dough recipe. Because that's one that I'm quite proud of. I do remember us putting the mixing bowl like out in the hallway for that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think we did do that. Because the mixer is loud. No such thing as a quiet mixer. All right. Now we're starting to firm up. This is very exciting, Ian. 
So I, does your dough need to rise? Uh, only 10 minutes, they say. Because it's not a yeast dough, right? No, there is in fact no leavening agent in here whatsoever. And in fact, it has a egg, so that actually technically puts it more on cake territory, if I recall. Oh, interesting. No wonder pierogies are so delicious. It's basically a savory <laughs> cake. I'm adding a third of a cup of brown sugar to my to my uh, egg butter slurry. All right. Well, this seems good. I'm going to let this rest for 10 minutes down here. And hopefully that will be okay. Doo -doo, hit the 10 minute timer button on the watch. All right. So while that's happening, I should probably make space here on the table for workspace reasons. Put that up there. Uh, and let's, I don't know, let's make the cottage cheese filling. Why not? How exciting. Yeah. I'm going to need another bowl for that. How about this big metal bowl that's here? That appears to belong to you. That's the one I was going to use. Teamwork. Yeah. All right. Let's start with the. Uh, let's start with the potato. Because I can just make that in here, actually, and then we can do the ricotta. Elsewhere. So, what's the potato filling? Is it just plain potatoes? No, potato filling says you want a tablespoon of chopped onion fried in a tablespoon of butter. Two or in this case, maybe bacon grease. Yep. Yep. Two cups of uh, mashed potatoes mm -hmm. and salt and pepper, and a third a cup of cottage cheese, approximately. Oh, how fun! This thing looks like about a cup and a half of mashed potatoes, probably close to a cup if I were to compress it. So that we can probably make that a a halved recipe as well. But well, you don't want to double up your filling if you're having if you're only doing half the dough. Exactly. All right, let's chop some onion, shall we? <laughs> Got some people in the chat suggesting they'd like to be here just based on smell alone. I mean, basically it smells like cloves and bacon in here right now. Which is an interesting combination. I'm not complaining. I mean, it basically smells like a college dorm room because it smells like clove cigarettes and bacon. <laughs> Maybe I can add that directly into there. Nope, that's a garbage can. Garbage can go. Checking the recipes as you go is an important thing as well. Well, I need to mix my I need to mix my molasses with water. To uh, you, the recipe calls for hot water to help thin out the molasses, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you sort of go a little bit of dry ingredient into this, a little bit of wet, a little bit of dry, a little bit of wet. Oh, this is not. The best knife in the world. My terrible knife skills. Did I ever tell you that I went and got my knife sharpened at House of Knives in the mall? No, you didn't. Was that recent? Uh, it was a few months ago, and I have never had. I will never go back. My knives are no sharper than they were, but they sure did keep them for four days. <laughs> okay. I was so mad. Wow. So don't go there. Okay. No, my, my, my plan was, uh, I mean, other knife sharpeners are available, but my plan was to go with uh, Midknife Crisis. Midknife Crisis. They're a, a small business in town that does uh, sharpening on demand at your location, which means they also work for restaurants. Oh, yeah. You want a restaurant knife sharpener. Yeah. Like the mall knife sharpener doesn't seem to me to be a 
Apparently, House of Knives, like, somebody sold me House of Knives would be fine. I, they were... They were wrong? I don't know. I feel like maybe my, I mean, my knives are definitely not the world's highest quality knives. I got the get the set as a gift. But they're not that bad. They should get sharper. Yeah. Like, I was appalled with how dull they are still. Sneaking in behind you here to get a frying pan. From our set. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is I need in another container, which I don't have another bowl here. So I might have to go get another bowl. Like, a, like uh, unless I can use that you one. You can use that one, yeah. Okay, I'll go wash it. I'll wash it for you after I'm done. Is I gotta Thank mix you. my hot water and my molasses together. Boop. Get some bacon grease in there. So when this recipe calls for. Three quarters of a cup of hot water and three quarters of a cup of molasses. So. Let's see, here's a quarter of a cup. Here's some water. Here's the moment of truth. That's still nice and hot. One. Two. Three, three quarters of a cup of hot water. You got there. Ah, ah, ah. Three quarters of a cup. Go. They taped the lid on my molasses so it wouldn't come open in my in my carry bag, and I was like, "That's very considerate of you. Thank you, Bulk Barn." <laughs> So, Oops. Ian, do you know what molasses is? It is. No. You know what? I've forgotten. Cause Tell me. I don't know what it is. I was asking you. Okay, because I, I think it's it's cooked down sugar cane or other sugar based. It's definitely a sugar byproduct. Yeah. Well, because brown sugar is just sugar with molasses added. And white sugar is sugar with the molasses removed. Interesting. <laughs> And then there's blackstrap molasses and fancy unsulfured molasses. Okay, we've got some heat happening here in the pot, so let's get some onions in there. Oh, yeah. So there's some common questions that many people have about molasses. Is molasses tasty? Yes. Absolutely. Depends on your previous encounters with molasses. <laughs> I say molasses is better left into other recipes. My uncle used to sneak uh, spoonfuls of it out of my grandmother's pantry back when they were living in the deep farm. But I Rural think they Alberta. just didn't have anything else to eat. Though. That's correct. There was no way to get candy. That, that, that was, was candy. You know those really gross Halloween candies that are like brown and like the orange wrapper? Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, these are foul. Why does anybody ha eat those? Those are molasses candies. Mm -hmm. Those are some of my favorites. Really? Yeah, you don't get them in much anymore. Oh, wow. Penelope got like a bunch of them and I was just like, oh, she ain't going to eat these. <laughs> Smelling good, guys. So here's my molasses -y liquid. It's just water and molasses Ooh. together. And I'm going to add some water and molasses. That's to, what gives it the color. To my butter mixture. Yoink. Hmm. Give that a stir. In retrospect, I probably could have cut these onions a bit smaller, but that's all right. Oh, almost certainly. So, this looks foul. <laughs> but here's the thing, this is what this looked like when I made this last year, so this sort of like weird, almost curdled look is okay. It'll all come together in the baking. 
baking is very forgiving. And besides, there's a lot of sugar in here between the sugar and the molasses and the spices. So like texture wise, everything will be good, will be just fine. Let's be honest, some parts of baking are forgiving. <laughs> baking is the one that also has all the science in it. Or the... Well, that's why I'm not changing any of the ratios. Yes. That's why that sort of stuff matters. Okay, so that's good. Um, potatoes are ready. And now we just need a, about a third of a cup of cottage cheese. I'm just going to mix up these potatoes a bit here so that they're nice and ready for mixing. Mm -hmm. There's my cottage cheese. Ooh, and the dough is now ready. Great. Wow. This is very efficient. Good. Our timing is on point today. Okay. <laughs> well, Sarah, I hope you have a better appointed kitchen to do this in than we currently have here. Well, uh, if you can make something in our dorm room equivalent kitchen, you can make it in your kitchen. Yeah. That. that seems like it's about a third of a cup. Sure. You don't need to wipe down the side of your bowl when you do it. I'm just trying to minimize drips and drops. And also just a little bit of a uh, bit of retentiveness. Well, I just don't want to put my hand in something sticky. Oh, wow, that already has a smell more like the inside of a pierogi. Okay. So when you're mixing baked goods, I prefer the folding method because the more you mix something, the tougher it will be, the chewier it will be, the more glutinous it will be. <laughs> uh, so you don't want to over mix like muffins and cakes and stuff like that but you do want to make sure you don't have big pockets of flour just hanging around so if you fold like this it's a lot more gentle but that looks good ian there's a recommendation from sarah to put the dough in the fridge while you're not working with it oh. just so it's easier to work with later that's a good point i might actually be beginning to start working with it in just a moment here anyway so so the worst part of doing this is getting your uh, mini loaf pan, is getting the batter into your mini loaf pans. So do what you can. Lay out your paper. Oh, here, let me do this so camera can see. Is that better camera? There you go. Here. Oh, perfect. Get a, like a little blob in there to put your paper down. Then gently scrape in. Wow, there's a little blob of flour there. And you can even everything out with your spatula. Scrape down your paper. And then this is important when you're baking. Give things a couple taps to level out your batter and to uh, get any huge air bubbles out. There probably aren't that many like big ass air bubbles in here. Did you take the rack out of the oven? I did. The oh. rack can be re returned. Okay, so I was gonna, I'm going to need that. I think my dough is a bit uh, still runny. I think I might need to add more flour to it. Interesting. Yeah, and I look up to see directly if the pierogi dough is still sticky, add more flour. Oh. Well, got there. Yeah. And or put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. But I think we... Judging from what I know from pizza making, this is definitely too... Too runny? Yeah. That's okay. The difference is with pizzas, you generally keep... Need or needing it in the machine until it's 
until it comes together. Elastic is F. Well, it's because you want that chewy, crunchy, or not chewy, but you want that chew. Yeah, that, that crumb too. So, because like, like pizza, pizza is all about being crunchy. Yeah. Not crunchy, sorry, chewy, chewy. You want chewy, glutinous pizza dough, which is why people toss it and then they work it. And they like draw out all the gluten in the crust to really like give it that texture that you mm -hmm. want. Not a texture that you want in baked goods. It's just gonna make them tough. Because pizza dough is kind of tough. If you were to eat like a loaf of bread, oh god, yeah, that, that would, would be, be like pizza dough would be awful. Impossible. Okay, this is starting to look a little bit better. I think I'm gonna add just a bit more flour to it as well. Oop. Plunk. Also, maybe using a spatula, not the best tool, but I could probably end up using hands at this point, but I don't want to get my hands all over this. All right, it's going to be sticky. It's a sticky dough. Good to know. Uh, hence your advice to flour the F out of everything. All right, uh, could I ask one of our lovely assistants to toss that in the fridge for me for the next few minutes? Did you do me a favor? That's... Yes. Can you put the rack back in the oven? I uh, can certainly do that. Where would you like it to go? Uh, lower. Lower rack? All right. Now we'll do it again, but straight. There we go. Oh, perfect. One of these is going to have less, less batter than the others, which is good, which means it'll cook faster. And already these will cook faster, but not dramatically faster than the... Uh, than like a full size loaf, but they, but like, whereas a full size loaf can sometimes take up, whoops, there goes a big blob of gingerbread batter. A full size loaf can sometimes take up to like, God, an hour and 20 minutes, depending on what you're cooking and how dense it is and all these other goodies, these, all these other factors. Uh, these will cook much faster, which is another advantage of doing miniature loaves. All right. Being when I did this recipe, I doubled it and did like eight pans at once. Or I made enough for eight pans. Because you are giving them out as gifts. I was giving them out as gifts, and I knew I needed eight. All right. I am uh, in want of another bowl. So I'm probably just going to take the pot out of these pans here. And use it. When in doubt, a pot is like a tiny bowl. Mm. That's delicious. Okay. Don't eat raw flour. Don't eat raw eggs. Except when it's time to. I live dangerously. <laughs> I do what I want. I'm a strong, independent woman. Don't need no gastrointestinal tract. <laughs> I'll get salmonella anytime I choose. <laughs> Damn straight. Okay, uh, can I borrow one of your eggs? Yeah. So you have one left. I'm done. I'm just going to put my stuff Great. in the oven now. It's all preheated and everything. Six oofs. Six oofs? Yep. That's, that's French for all of you. For six eggs? Yes. I've oh. only got five in there. Well, we're down to four now. I thought you, but that's, the six oofs is the halved recipe? Oh no, sorry, the, just literally reading this, the front of your, uh, of your egg carton. Oh! Yeah, was, no, one egg. I was like, <laughs> wow, this calls for a lot of eggs. Yeah, no, not at all. All right. So we'll do another third of a cup of cottage fromage. 
Ooh, the four percent stuff. That's the good shit. Why, if you're going to be buying dairy, why go halfway? And we'll wipe that out. All right. So the recipe says that this is going to take fifty to sixty minutes, Ooh. but I don't think it will. No, our, our uh, oven seems hotter. Well, also the loaves are a lot smaller. Like fifty to sixty minutes is to cook a full-sized loaf, which is all that batter. And so there's a lot more surface area, and there's a lot less like center density. So, mm. uh, what time is it now? Six fifty-six. I'm going to check those at seven thirty because that's thirty-five minutes. Sounds so like that's like about half, but a little bit like. You want, like, it's not going to cook in, like, 15, but, uh, you know, uh, just keep an eye on it, especially if you're doing a mini loaf, because who knows how long it's going to take to cook, but. All right. Oh. Cheese. Ricotta. Delicious. Yeah. Uh, could I ask, as well, if there's some time, some sp uh, time frame available on the other side from our assistant to go place these in the fridge so that they no longer... Wait, take these eggs, too. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thanks. Yay, Matt! Yay, and all of our perishables are now gone. We're safe. Uh, that paper towel. What I like about this recipe is I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you, you went really quickly. Yeah, there's not much to it. Like, here's the thing. Nobody wants to be slaving in a hot kitchen at Christmas. Everything is already too stressful. You already have gifts to buy for people you don't know how to shop for. Uh, you've got decorating to do. If you're like me, the Christmas badness has already taken your body. And you have bought fresh boughs. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no, there's, there, I bought, I went, I went to Thrifties yesterday because I have a really nice garden section. And then I was like, I would like some fresh cedar boughs to decorate my house with so it smells amazing in there. Too much decking. Oh, I, well, I have a small person to, that, that make, oh, that I need right, to make the holidays yes. extra magical for. Like, normally I would not have given a single shit about the holiday season, but now it's not for me, it's for somebody else. You're making memories. That's right. So now I have a bunch of cedar boughs drying out in my tub because they were wet when I got them because it was raining. And then I was like, well, I can't put them on my sideboard now. They'll make everything wet. So Your Graham part? came home and he's like, why is there dead? Why did you murder? Why did you kill and dismember a tree in our bathtub? <laughs> and I was like, it's a long story. Okay. So this is the one that I'm guessing you need to be very careful with when adding it as a, uh, in fact, I might want to add some more, do you like, no, that's, no, that's, that's actually good. As long as you seal it up within a few seconds of it. Uh, I mean, how would you even thicken that up? More ricotta, maybe? I think so. If I were to put something in there, that would be more ricotta. More ricotta. Horna, we got to we gotta go deeper. We gotta go thicker. Add more ricotta. Add the ricotta to the deep, thick mixer. But yeah, seriously, if you want to make something for people, little gingerbread loaves are delicious, seasonal, and inexpensive. I'm kind of sorry to ask him. They need the ricotta back. But you can bring the uh, the dough with you. Oh. Because well, I think we're ready to dough. We're ready to do 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 dough. Uh, which is going to be the fun part. Do you want me to help with the dough? It might be useful. Yeah. Uh, especially the stuffing and folding portion. Yeah. It could definitely be useful. It just seems like we'll, we'll, we'll go twice as fast. Yes, but what I'm going to need is underneath the bowl yeah, yeah. is a machine de pates pasta. Oh, the pasta machine. Yes. Did you have this or did you buy this just for this? I bought this just for this. Oh. At a good place in town called Value Village. Oh, really? Yeah, do not buy anything brand new when you don't have to. Especially when you can go to a thrift shop and buy something brand new. Oh, that's that's a Christmas present from last year that somebody yeah. somebody was getting rid of. I either had no intention of making uh pasta at any point. Do you want me to add more ricotta while you're working on yes, the pasta? Yes, please. I, let me be your assistant. How much more ricotta should I add? Try uh, maybe a bit of, you know, half that start. Cool. And I'm going to work this out. <coughs> oh, and it's got egg in there to bind it too, but that's okay. All right. So now we need to roll out the dough apparently. 
I don't know if this is workable or not. Oh yeah, that seems like it's got something to it. Ah, maybe it is still just a bit runny. Tell you what, I'm going to start working this on the table, actually. Rather than messing up your brand new pasta machine? Yeah, well, and uh, rather than just trying to. So does this does the filling does the filling have salt added to it as well? Yes, it does. It has okay. a uh, quarter teaspoon. This is actually quite a bit of amount, well, quite a bit of salt for this much food. Yeah, but given how much you put in, it's not going to be as, or how much goes into each pierogi. You know what I want to try making on this show, Ian? What'd you like to try making? Sure. I want to do a fluffy Japanese style cheesecake, like what you would get at Uncle Tetsu's, like yes. with the with, with the beaten eggs and the just the too much work. Indeed, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Oh yeah, this definitely needs a bit more flour. All right, let's get one out of the top there. I mean, this is a kitchen table from Ikea, right? So it should be okay to handle flour and dough. That's looking much better. Oh yeah, that's much more like a... And that can just go away completely, actually, if that's in the way. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Looking good. Well... We're starting. We're starting to get there. And it looks better. Good. Thank you, Sarah. This is the sort of feedback which is very helpful for something like this, which we haven't done before. That's probably good, Ian, says Sarah, for this flour. No okay. more flour. Good. That will go through a machine pretty well. And then we'll just wash your hands before you cook. All right, let's see if I can assemble a machine Ooh. fully floured. Ooh, for cutting raviolis. Mm -hmm. Cool. Handy. Probably not useful for our purposes. No, but... no, I don't think so, but... All right, here comes the question. Uh, the handle's over there. Actually, that's the lock. Oh. This was the, and actually one of the reasons I ended up buying this particular one from Valley Village. Because it was at Valley Village and it was the only one there? No, there were three. Holy crap. Would you like to know why I bought this particular one though? I would love to. Because it had a handle. The other ones were literally just completely handleless. Oh. So I think you actually just, you don't need this back bit. No, because you just want to roll a sheet. Yeah. So I don't. That's the instruction manual. Prepare machine for use. Let's prepare the mixture. Oh yeah, this goes through the one side, and the other side is for the uh, is for the side cutting. So it just rolls right through here. It's now covered in flour. There All you right. go. Oh, so, and then you can set your thickness. Yeah, and I don't think it needs to be at the uh, absolute smallest thickness. I'm going to start it at. Uh, Let's start it at the, the thickest? second, the thickest level. Okay. Isn't the handle completely necessary in these things? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm trying to think if we need to clamp this or not, but I don't think we do. Yes, thank you, Corey. I can't wait to vacuum this, this okay. uh, room after we're done. There's going to be so much vacuuming. Right. So, would you like to crank this? I can crank that, soldier boy. Yeah. Or would you like to feed the dough? We're going to need to do one and the other, I think. Do you want to crank or feed? Uh, I'll crank. Okay. You crank that, soldier boy. So I don't want to put all this dough in at once. I want to tear off some dough I, or cut some dough. It's going to get really long. Maybe half of yeah, half through the machine. Don't do it all at once. Okay. All right. Let's get that covered. 
cover him. That one. That one. All right, and I'll begin the rollinating. Where's it going? Uh, under my hand. In a good way? Uh, kind of? Except not really. It's too wet. It's goopy. Well, keep ro keep going, yep, though. We might as well get it through. I mean, it's sort of working. Hmm. Maybe if I go slower? Oh my gosh, this looks like a special effect. <laughs> I think what I might need to do is maybe need this a bit more. Yes. <laughs> we on. All right. Um, well, that was that was an exciting that's a good experiment. Time. That's. We. It's coming clean from your uh, pasta machine, though. It's not actually stuck to the rollers, thank goodness. That's important. All right. Yeah, the rollers are okay. It should probably fall apart less than that, says Sarah. Okay, let's add some more flour and get kneading a bit more. I mean, my hand's already now covered in, in flour. I'll do one, you do the other. Sure. If you want to take that to the... Or, yeah, just right I'm here. I'm just going to do it right good. here. Okay. is coming off. Uh oh, that's how you can tell Ian's serious. He's taking off his glasses. <laughs> no, no, they're falling off. That's oh. the problem. Oh, he's. I thought you were getting sundere with this uh, yeah, dough or something like that. I don't know if anything. I was going to say that. That's how you can tell that I'm. Uh, that, that I'm actually in using effort. He's working the glasses off. We want to work your way down to that thickness. If there's a C clamp in the office, you want to clamp the machine down. We don't really have. Uh... We might have some C clamps in the equipment room. Well, the thing comes with the, the thing comes with a clamp. It's just not wide enough for this table, I think. Also, I'm afraid of crushing the table. That's true. We have to use this table for AFK. Yep. Which is next Wednesday. Pandemic Legacy is back. Oh, how exciting! Okay, this feels a bit better, this one. How's yours doing? Uh, still feeling a little wet. Can I sneak through you and grab a bit more flour there? Bring it to the center. Oh, wow, it's going to be a lot of fun cleaning this table after we're done, Ian. Yeah, I have a, I have a plan. Is the plan to just stop working here? <laughs> You know, millennials apparently just ghost from their jobs nowadays. At least that's what the uh, sites on the internet are telling me. Maybe it's time for me to just... Ooh, hey, Matt, could you swing the camera over to our gingerbread loaves? Ooh, oh, wow. Those are starting to look very nice. Yeah, you can kind of see them a bit. All right, this is still feeling quite sticky, but it is start feeling a lot more glutinous. Yeah, this one feels to me like it's actually starting to... This one's just sticking to the table. Yeah, they're never not going to stick to... Stick to I'm going to need... Whatever, apparently. Just make it like croissant and just like fold, 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 yeah. butter, fold, butter, <laughs> fold. I felt like I must not be doing my job right because the other day Dale seemed to think I wasn't aware of a Japanese animation about bread making. All right. I feel like I've done a good job getting a lot more flour into this. Mm -hmm. It feels a lot more elastic. 
Agreed. I think these are both starting to get a lot better. Shall we attempt another roll? Yeah. You want to do yours or mine? Uh, let's give yours a try. Okay. Why not? You know what I'm going to do, though? I still think this is, like, too much to go through. That's not a bad idea. All righty. And I'm going to clean this space up. Okay. So then if it's, like, kind of a disaster again, we have so much less dough that we need to clean up. Yep. Which is going to is going to matter. All right. Ready, Ian? I am ready. Rolling begins. Oh, 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 I feel it's going through. It's working. The dough is coming out. It's falling apart less. Ian's covered in flour. I think it's working. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep moving my arm through here. Yeah. That, All right. I think it's done. Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe go straight down. Oh, no. That is, yeah, that is not. All right. So now we have a different kind of special effect. <laughs> That's, yeah. I mean, it's holding its shape. I feel like we've put a lot of flour into this, and I don't know why it's not working. What if we did it the old-fashioned way, and we just rolled it out by hand? We can do that. I did bring a rolling pin with me. Let's uh, move that up to the... To the backup zone? Yeah. This is quite fun. I feel like... Hey, Matt, what time is it? Oh, it's currently a quarter after seven. Uh, it's not on. It's not on. That's oh, why. That's why I had to ask. I was like, "Hey, that's that's working a lot better." Okay, so yeah, let's move these to. I'm gonna say there, there, there. Actually, we can. And do you have an oven mitt around here, Ian? Yeah, we've got the. Uh, a cloth. These uh, welding gloves, which I recommend. Give highly. me a glove. I want to rotate my loaves. Yeah. Rotate your loaves. So here's the thing. No oven cooks evenly. <laughs> Sarah, don't worry about uh, trying Ooh. to fix our... Oh, those look lovely. What? They're sliding out. Can you hand me the other welding glove, please? Yes. They're gonna be like, how did they how did they get dough on the inside of these welding gloves? Uh. Yeah, all the heat's escaping. It'll do that, but it's it's a small area. It'll come back up. Yeah, and here's the thing that I want to that I'm why I'm doing this. Not all loaves cook at the same temperature at the same time. So it's really important to uh, do a rotation about halfway through. Oh. And your oven will very rarely circulate. Whoops. I wanted to put the small one over the other side. Your oven, very rarely will an oven circulate totally evenly. There are always going to be hot spots. Yeah. So by moving stuff around part way through. Yeah, you let a bunch of the heat out and it might take a couple more minutes to cook, but everything will cook evenly and you won't have like one loaf that's dramatically more cooked than another one. So I'm making, so it's like pierogi dough, right? And pierogies are small, right? Yep. I think we're getting closer here. Oh, it was just more flour and more kneading? Yep. Oh, you know what I might have also done is uh, gone in the wrong direction. Wait, really? I doubt it, but this seems to be getting better. It just maybe I it think, just needed to rest. I think it needs more kneading too, because it's starting to stick together better. 
but it's still not it's still still extremely sticky here and wet what if we rolled it out like the way they roll dumplings how do you mean like by hand and then you oh like a thing. galaxy here we go sarah says we always make this dough the night before and leave it in the fridge i bet that has a lot to do with it actually oh we should have we should have brought out something we prepared ahead of time perhaps sticky is good because it does have to stick to itself well let's try this and see how they work what's the next step after you fill them do you well we'll be boiling them after we fill them how exciting well that one got all the way through before it uh, it gave up hand me a small chunk of dough sure this is a small chunk of dough i'm going to keep playing with this We've already made a big mess everywhere. Yeah. How big is a pierogi? Uh, it is going to be three. You can use this if you like to cut it. Three inches is about the diameter. Mm. Yeah, this feels really good. Either. How thick? Like quite thin? Like how much pierogi dough do you... Uh, so don't don't roll it all the way out. But, uh, and now, now you probably want to make the cut, I think. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I might have found out what I'm doing here, too. Oh, yeah? Recipe, I think, specifies three inches. But maybe, yeah, three inch diameter cookie cutter. Uh, though Sarah says four inches square, so another option. How's yours going? I've already got three circles done. Hey. I'll have two more for you. Mm, that could be a little thinner. This is starting to get a bit better. But always flour, never not flour. Let's get some flour on this one. I'm just afraid that this dough is getting very tough because it's been worked so much. But I have some floured three inch circles. This dough is starting to come together. I'm going to run it through a second time after this. So then how do you fill a pierogi? Well, you take a teaspoon. Okay. Uh, if you've got actually things there, well, let's take some filling. Okay. Place it in the center of the pierogi. Okay. Well, this is a half tea. This is a half tablespoon, so yeah, it's, it's a teaspoon in it. Yeah. Like again, this is old world. Things. Uh, don't overfill it though, because you can't get any on the edges. Because we want the edges to be able to push together and seal. Okay. Get out. That, that might not be big enough actually. With you the might, circle? Yeah, you might want to re-roll those. There, I'll just spread it out a bit. Boop, boop. Get. Yeah, put an amount of real, uh, filling until it looks right, but try not to add too much because you're folding it in half and sticking the edges together. Okay, and then like, what, like a gyoza? Yeah. Pinch the edges together um, in... Like a rolled fold or what? Like a tiny calzone? They just have to stick together. Yeah. Oh. You know, like a pierogi. I don't eat a lot of pierogies. <laughs> All right, I've made one pierogi, I think. Nice. I think I've made a sheet. 
that's ready for pierogi action? Just about. Well, not for pierogi action. I think it's ready for another trip through the uh, through the roller. I'm going to re-dust it here with flour. And then I'm going to... Yep, thin it up. You know me. Like, this is what a pierogi looks like, right? Pinched edges? It's That's looking very good. Yeah. And just really... I think you really want to mash on them so you can keep it. Oh, I'm... Actually, do we have a fork? I could do, like, the fancy fork edges. We do. Not right with us at the moment, but... Thank you, Matt. This has been Matt's most active... Uh, Episode? ...helping session. I feel like, Ian, we should... Uh, I, Ian, like, I know that you're very keen on the pasta roller, but note, I've already made several pierogies at this point. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we're almost getting there. Oh, wow. Yes. This is starting to look like a dough. Oh, thank you. Let's hear it. Let's hear it for Matt, everybody. Or not. I feel like I've seen pierogies with like pie edges. That's from, too like, thin. Somebody being lazy. Like, how's this look? Does this look like a pierogi? I think that looks great. Ta da! Kathleen, the school of. Oh, hell, let's just do it. Just make it. Like, here's the deal. What's the worst that's going to happen? Like, they don't look beautiful? Who cares? I've never made a pierogi before. No one's going to judge you. I mean, definitely people are judging me. But, you know what I say to them? I'm not going to judge you. Ow. I just clonked my knee. All right, now let's let's try something advanced. Let's try this this very runny filling. Okay. Make it happen. This I'm cheesy gonna filling. I'm going to see what I can do with this. And then whatever comes out, I'll either re-roll out myself. I think I like my uh, dumpling fold better. I think that looks cuter. Also, I feel like might be it might be more secure for doing this very liquidy filling. Okay. This cheesy ricotta stuff. I think I have some dough that might be what I consider usable. I'm going to flour it up as well. I'm proud of you, Ian. Thank you. Can you pass me the, uh, the cup, please? Yeah. What happens when I do this? And then add in. So normally if I'm feeling like I want pierogies, which is like, I'm going to say honestly, almost never. I just like go to the grocery store and that's like, ooh, Chimo. That's on sale. That is available. That's typically how I do pierogies in my house. <laughs> I tried them with Penelope because I thought she might like pierogies. It's just like a cheese dumpling. She did not. No. She got mad at me. She, Penelope's a very picky eater. Mm -hmm. That's fine. One day she won't be. Or maybe she will be. And that's not my problem. I tried. Well, so did I. But... What, to make Penelope not a tricky... Uh, 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 a picky eater? Oh, Lord, no, no. I try to fancy fold along the edge. Oh. Oh, very That's nice. Not... So we should... Oh, on right. <laughs> Here. Meanwhile, poor Corey. That Thank looks you. like a thing. Next, okay. Uh, we, should, we should make a tray to put these on. Let's boil our water. Let's get serious. Yeah, let's make some pierogies. <laughs> Who wants to eat these things when we're done? <laughs> Wait, actually, hold on. Let's do Kathleen pierogies and Ian pierogies. Okay. So we can see who's pierogi like. Rain supreme. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Hand me some more dough. Sure. Uh, do you want a fresh? Yeah, I want some of that dough. I'm going to work it and roll it out and cut it and not pasta sheet because okay. I think it's just, I think it's been worked enough. I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of making it tough. Yeah, I'm going to. Not roll. Well, you know what? I am going to roll it through the pasta machine one more time because I'm insane. You're I'm a gonna, bold man. I'm going to. I'm going to make this happen. 
You're not. You're not insane. You're. You're right. Confident. I am. I am careless. You're reckless. Yes. Who? Anything could be happening to that dough. Oh, yeah. We need to flour this pan. Uh, you know what? Yep. Let's get those off there immediately. <laughs> Oh, they'll stick? Yep. So much flour involved in this. All right. One, two. Yep. That seems ridiculous. Kathleen's four pierogies to the wind already. I'm on pierogi machine. No one can stop me. I'm mad with dumpling power. Also, like I said, I'm a firm believer in like, oh, good enough. Let's just try it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> they fall apart when they're being boiled? Eh. I'm a glutton for punishment. But I'm having fun, and that's what matters. Yeah, exactly. At a certain point in cooking, you just have to do the thing. Otherwise, you're just... Oh, ho, ho. This is starting to look much better. Maybe. No? Question mark, question mark. No, no, this is exactly what we want. Uh-oh, Corey's getting involved. Oh, she's going to hold for me. That's right. This is a four-person job here. I think the other key is you can't roll too fast. Right. Pierogies are not fans of efficiency. Oh, this sheet looks good. You think you finally got there, Ian? I think I might have. It's thick, but it's looking good. He's thick, but he's strong? Yeah. He came out in one piece. That's the important thing. <sighs> okay. Oh. Do you know what it smells like in here right now, though? gingerbread oh yeah okay so i've done this with the past machine i'm going to now cheat a bit flour it on both sides spray flour everywhere and then i'm going to cheat by taking my rolling pin and rolling it out a bit this way my hand and i think that that will make dough that I am happy with. Mm, that's probably too much filling. Whoa. Too far. Sticky boy. I, that's that's a hubristic amount of pierogi filling right there. Are you, oh. I flew too close to the sun, Ian. All right. That seems good. Can I leave oh. some of that filling? Yeah, sorry, I'm hogging the filling. No, that's okay. Ooh, you and me both. Super hubris. Oh, for too much filling? It's way less than you think it is. It might yep. actually be, remember, we're like, oh, it's probably just like a teaspoon, teaspoon. It might actually be a literal teaspoon. Yep. I think it is. Oh. Okay, let's do my fold. My fold, my... Hold my fold. You know what? I'm just going to pinch. Fancy folds are for people who aren't me right now. I can cut the majority of these just about now. Oh, 
<sighs> I think it might be time for new glasses, actually. What, for you to get new glasses? Mm, well, just to have them properly sit on my face. Oh, glasses that don't fall down your nose? Yep. I got a pair of those uh, when I got these, and I, would tell you, I tell you what, it was a good, like, I didn't actually need to get my prescription changed, so at first I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. But I tell you what, not having glasses that fell down, that fall down my face was like a big quality of life improvement for me, Ian. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the secret of why I got these glasses. I believe you. Also, I was like, I want to be stylish. <laughs> that matters. It matters to me. I'm very vain. Well, fine. I guess I'll just use my fingers then. These look like more like wontons, I think, than pierogies, but that's okay. The best food is like fusion food, right? <laughs> and pierogies are realistically just Ukrainian wontons. Essentially. Just the uh, more heavier in the batter, I guess. Okay, hopefully that wasn't that wasn't a uh, Icaristic level. Oh yeah, that one came together like nobody's business. Okay, here we go. Begin the assembly line. So oh, I don't know if I don't know if people are commenting. Kathleen, you're doing great, says Sarah Serinde. I was gonna be like, oh boy. Uh, how are people, what are people's opinions on my pierogies? The opinions are you're doing great. So then how long do we boil them for? That's a good question. I'll need to check the recipe for that, but I think you just boil them until they're done. So do they float to the top when they're done? I believe that's the Chimo way. That's, that is the Chimo way. You know my, you know my sister? loves and she might get mad at me for telling the story but she loves deep fried pierogies yeah. deep fried you say deep fried to the point where when she was in university she actually bought herself a deep fryer so wow. she could make herself deep fried pierogies wow my sister has always been very like utilitarian with food though so she's just like how can i get delicious food that has a lot of calories and requires very little wa work and i think she arrived at deep fried pierogies being cheap and nutritionally dense like, you eat six deep-fried pierogies, you don't have to eat again for the rest of the day. Good point. Like, you're done. You can go home. Unless you are home. My sister also, uh, very famously, like, in our household, uh, to, to the sort of eternal jokingness of my dad and I, uh, also, when she moved out on her own, started eating uh, rice with ranch dressing on top. Rice with ranch dressing? My sister, no, the culinary gene doesn't run that deep in the DeVeres, as it turns <laughs> out. Did, did you see what, what the name was I chose for myself last night on Fireball Island? No, I didn't. I missed it because I was uh, we all give ourselves, with my dad. We all give ourselves silly names, I think. Uh, Ben's was uh, Derek Gooddong. Uh, Beach had something completely incomprehensible. It was Beach. Uh, Heather rocked the name... Chicken salt, in reference to a, the uh, Pringles we've got in the office. And I played the character Ranch Emeritaste. Ranch Emeritaste? Yes. My sister would be proud of you, Ian. All I've ever wanted. Have you ever met my sister? Not once. She's like a, she, she looks very, we look very alike. Like it's very clear that we're sisters. But she has a, uh, sort of strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes and uh, didn't get a, her nose broken when she was a kid. Uh, so she's actually like, uh, I would say, definitely the better looking of the two sisters. Hmm. Well, having not met her, I cannot comment, but... She's also definitely the smarter of the two sisters because she is, uh, <laughs> she is a chemical engineer. Ooh. 
I mean, that's definitely the way you want to be in terms of getting paid. Yes. Well, she chose that career based on, like, long-term financial prospects, making her a very smart person indeed. So Sarah has uh, shared some photos of their pierogies. Oh! Their family's pierogies in, in, uh, oh. on Twitter. Apparently, ours are much neater, which is uh, That's boring. shocking to discover. And uh, I also found out that the pictures she sent along to me to illustrate how these things should go with the recipe were Google image search photos. I spent the last year thinking those were uh, those were actual photos. Oh no! I must not have read close enough. Oh wow, that gingerbread is starting to smell very good. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty. I think we're just about at the time where we can probably start. Boiling the crap out of these? Yeah, boiling these guys and then maybe having a little feed all together. I'm so excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matt, you ready to eat some very poorly made pierogies? There's none of them here, though. They're, these are all so well made. Aww. Aww. So sweet. Corey, how about you? Do you want some crap, crap pierogies? Fill me up. <laughs> all right. Everybody is more confident than we are. I'm really happy with the crescents I've been starting to make. Oh, those are lovely. It feels... And it says boiling the water now. Yeah, we should do that. I think this is now cool enough. Oh, we still need those. That's, that's, that's dressing. That's a condiment. Heat forever. Boy, I'm glad I... A, I'm glad I checked before the show whether or not we were going to blow a fuse. And we didn't. Which I'm very glad of. But B, wow, we didn't blow a fuse. I'm so proud of us. This is a real night of firsts here. I've never made pierogies before. You've never made pierogies before. Nope. And by the end of the night, we will have made pierogies. And hopefully they won't have all fallen apart in the... Like, that's my concern, is that my beautiful pierogies will just disintegrate. Okay. You know what? I think that we've got a we've got a full sheet. I think that's enough pierogies for now. I think that is. I just rolled this out. You know what? You can use that extra filling for Ian. Twice baked potatoes. Hey. You ever done you, a twice baked potato? Oh boy, no, I have not. But I've had them. Oh. Okay. Twice baked potatoes are super duper easy. Let me walk you through the recipe right now. Take a potato. Okay. Bake it. Okay. Take it out of the oven. Gotcha. Let it cool. Not, like, to ice cold, but to handling temperature, because then you will buck your potatoes in half and scoop out the insides. Mm. Then you will take the insides, and you will mash it with lots of butter and garlic and bacon and salt and whatever else you want to add, green onions, sour cream. You make, like, a really rich, whipped, baked, uh, whipped um, mashed potato that would not normally stand up, mm -hmm. because it has so much delicious filling. And then you put it back in your potato boats... Like your, your hollowed out potato and you sprinkle with cheese oh. on top and you put that in the oven to bake. It's labor intensive, but not difficult. Do we have a bowl where this dough came from? I did, but he didn't take away far enough. Perfect. I'll take that home with me. Perhaps I can figure out something to... to just for a midnight snack? No, no, no. Raw no. from the fridge? Mmm, -hmm. dough. Just, I'm just f thinking Delicious. that maybe I can figure out something to dough with it. <laughs> that looks good. That one's done. Oh, wow, those look lovely. And the chat gets to watch their indignity scroll down in the reflection on the pot. I'm going to say that these are all done. The small one might be a little overdone. Mm. So how can you tell when your loaves are done? Yeah, I... Please tell me, how can you tell when your loaves are done? Okay, let me get one on the camera. Yeah, let's get back into... Uh... Okay. Walking in front of camera. 
because behind camera is too dangerous. Everything's everywhere. Everything. This is a huge mess. Hello, welcome to Tinker Taylor. We've made a mess. Hi, I've got a finished loaf here. How can you tell it's done? Well, there's a couple different ways that you can tell a loaf is done. But well, the first one is that it's going to spring back nice. the touch. Uh, the second is it's got these lovely cracks. And the third is this is why we do the uh, irritating work with the paper and the cutting and stuff like that. Is so you can go like this. It works better if you can actually grip it. And you can literally check the undersides. Yeah, that looks done. It's very hot, so I'm going to put that back to that cool. That is Brill Skills. I would have done two toothpick tests, but that tells you right away. Comes it, out. Does it come out? It's done. Yeah. Woo! That's why you do this flap. <laughs> Cleanup's finished. <laughs> Look and like this, the, yeah. Wow. So anyhow, I'm going to leave these to cool on top of the, uh, on top of the oven and not on, on this surface because I don't want to wreck it. While we wait for that quite to... hot. We can have uh, we can have gingerbread for dessert. Nice. I'm going to chop up the bacon for the topping. Uh, ricotta is not necessary right now, but how do I turn this off? Uh, just keep turning it clockwise. Perfect. You're done. Cool. Wow, it's such a mess in here. It is a little bit of a mess. It's it's an exciting mess. Yeah. Uh, do you want to prepare the sour cream actually? I mean, how do you prepare sour cream? I've always just I scooped it out. Just, just open it. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. It's Great. like, what do I need to mix it with? Pierogies. Yeah, so do we salt the water that we cook the pierogies in? You know what? I haven't yet, but we probably should. Okay, the sour cream has been prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. Ooh. Mm, that's how you can tell it's the good shit. It doesn't move. Salt in there. You're not drinking the water. Can I put your uh, pasta maker back in its box? I mean, yeah. You can put it back in the box, but... Oh, wow. Yeah. It's just got goo all over it. Well, the whole thing is made of metal, so I'm going to say that this is probably dishwasher safe. How much did you pay for it? $25. Oh. Is still, I think, too much. I mean, it's probably... There's probably washing instructions in there. Yeah. And TBH, it probably also works better with pasta dough. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm going to hella, hella run this through the dishwasher when I get home. Dough scrap. Mmm. Saracens to run some paper towel through it. I think the big problem with this one is that the all the stickiness is at the edges. Actually, wait, while well, I've got the camera up there, I can probably point and sh show you. Hey, oh. Hey, there we go. This is a challenging. Yeah. So you got the uh, up in this corner here, right in there. Ooh, wait, I can probably just pull that out with my finger. There. And I'm, yes, I, I will 100% admit to probably not using enough flour. In fact, 100% not using enough flour. Or too much flour? I don't know. Okay, so our water is you know, starting to bubble. Crispy bacon. See, I think you actually cooked that perfectly for like doing little bits. I was, I'm happy with how it came out. I'm always worried though of going over because burned bacon is just a... Yeah, but it wasn't burned. No, it wasn't. But I'm, but that's what I'm worried about because it's a travesty to burn bacon. I assume that's what this garbage can is for, is our, like, stuff, right? It's, it's garbage, so. <laughs> I have been trying to keep our... Poor Peter, when he goes to empty it and there's just flour everywhere. I have been trying to keep my measuring cups separate, though, oh, for ease I of... I figured they're all just going in the dishwasher and we'd sort them out later. Oh, yeah, and I was going to take mine back and dishwash. Oh. 
Oh, wash at home. Yep. It's one of the things I actually am very, I, one of my kitchen instruments I love as much as I do are my measuring cups. Yeah, those are nice. I was appreciating them. I was like, that's a nice measuring cup. I just, I would hate to lose, you know, one or two. Mm. All right. Still waiting. We are on maximum power in terms of our heat machine. Uh, you know what? I'm going to suggest we take a short break. Oh, how put fun. Put some stuff away. And, yeah, uh, load, to put things in the dishwasher. And hopefully by then the, uh, the water will be boiling. Let's, we'll let's only boil the pierogies on camera, though. Correct. Let's, let's get the camera watching them fall apart immediately. Correct. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go away. More Tinker Tailor to front. Yeah. More of this. Yeah, back after this. I've constructed the most advanced cooking utensil known to man. Godspeed, Horner. All right. With the double we're back. Spoon. And we're here ready to boil our pierogies. We've loaded the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. We've tidied many things up. We'll still have our to water is boiling. It is extremely boiling. Should it be at a steady, should it be a fast boil or a low boil? Uh, I've set it to a 120 degree boil. I don't know what that means. Uh, 120 degrees Celsius. Okay, but like how boil? That seems like like a lot boily, but not too boily. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because I'm I'm guessing we want to. Oh, Sarah's is perfect. We, I'm, my thought here is that we want to cook the pierogies without forcing them open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ravioli. Like yeah, we don't exactly. want to cook them too too vigorously. All right. So what sh should we try? Some Ian pierogies and some Kathleen pierogies for like comparison's sake. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Let's put in four of each. Okay. I don't know which is what filling is what. Neither do I. So, so just slip them in? Yep, I think that's the case. Well, thanks for coming to by, Dale. Nice to see you in the chat. Hi, Dale. And then maybe this one of mine. This one looks like it's maybe. not going to fall. If I'm this is my together. crown prince of pierogies, this one. That's the best one? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so now the water is... Oh, you got you took it off the boil now. When they float, they're done, right? Okay. That's I that, I assume that's the uh, the real thing, but they could come apart, so we want to be vigilant. vigilant. Ooh, but it looks like one's already beginning to rise in a corner. I'm proud of us. Let's take that down a bit again. Ooh, too low. We want it to stay above boil. This is very stressful. And it looks like your crown prince is rising. <laughs> Maybe you'll bring that back up to a thousand full. Okay. This is all very stressful. I'm going to do just to keep things nice and clean is I'm not going to dump them out, but I'm going to transfer them spoon style into this colander here. Mm, mm, mm. So I think that one's ready, judging upon its uh, really floatiness. I mean, we we might we could probably just wait until the the, the full batch is ready. Yeah, I would I would be. <laughs> Sarah so says she would give it more time. So stressful. But I like the looks of them. I'm, I'm, so far none of them appear to have just to have immolated. I'm just checking my gingerbread, which feels dense and squishy. That's a good texture. Squish, squish. That means it's soft, but. Holding together well. This is the smallest of the four loaves I made. So yeah, I hope you understand now why I did all the business with the parchment <laughs> paper. It is just a time saver. Oh, they're all starting to float now, yeah. especially the Ian boys. I'm giving the ones from the bottom just a poke to loosen them. And that oh, was, I don't. That was the right move. 
This is very exciting. Ooh, here they come. Five to seven minutes from my experience, but that is not for this recipe. Well, Sarah, how long, how long do, uh, how long do they take when you make them at home? The filling is either uh, ricotta and cottage cheese or potato and cottage cheese and mm. onion. Okay. We're now at just about maximum float. Gotta wait for the, those two guys at the bottom to make their way to the top. They're mine. They're like, eh. <laughs> I don't want to cook. Four minutes, says Corey. That's her guess for prime pierogi. Four minutes, says Corey. Uh, I'm starting to smell them. Yep, boiled 10 minutes in salted water. 10 minutes? That's what the recipe card says. That seems like a long time. It does. But I don't want to eat a raw pierogi. No. This is so much fun. This is very intense. This is why we call it a, light, a let's try program, too. We're not entirely sure what doing. Wow. That, you know, the color grading on our preview monitor makes that look not right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you should. They look kind of brown and lumpy. What are they supposed to look like? Well, they, they, they look kind of green on our monitor, but that's because we have it set for. You can also see them in real life. Yeah, they look delicious in real life. What do you think, Kathleen? Should we take one out and see? Uh, sure. All right, that's one of Ian's. And that's one of mine. Great, that'll be a good checkpoint. So this is about the four minute mark. All right, do you want to go straight to a plate? Yeah, well, actually, let it drain for yeah. just a second. Get that water off. OK, so I think that we should eat our own pierogies yes. and then trade before we inflict them on anybody else. And I'm going to take these out so we don't overcook them. No, you know what? I'm just going to cut right into this with a fork on the side and see what it looks like dough-wise. Those are cooked. Mmm. Mmm. Could use a little bit more time, I think. Okay. Well, we're, they're still in there. Yeah. So let's. Uh, so this is. I got potato and cottage cheese. Let us know when we're at the. I also got potato. What is? In fact, I think I only did all potato and did one ricotta. I started getting fancy and doing ricotta. Mm -hmm. Not bad. I yep. got a nice chunk of onion in there. I would actually say these are better than Chimo. I mean, that's not a hard, <laughs> that's not a big bar to pass. Mm -hmm. Just for the dough, if anything else, it's really good. Mm, it's a little doughy. Not quite cooked, that one. Mm. All right. But I think they're probably cooked now. Okay. Let's see. This is very high stakes. <laughs> the most tension there's ever been in the retrieval of pierogies. That one worried me a bit. Well, that one was one of my ricotta ones, because oh. I was getting fancy. All right, and I'm going to toss another batch in as well. Sure. Let's do an all Ian batch. OK. So we can do some quality, quality <laughs> comparison. I think it'll all, they'll all basically end up the same. Yeah. But let's just put my remainder in. 
Okay. That's it. Wow, I made a lot of pierogies. You did. I was spending a lot of time faffing about with, uh, with, with dough. the dough, trying to get it to go. Would that one start to separate a bit? This one start. That one might be leaking its filling. Mm, we oh, well, that's okay. Too. Maybe I should have drained the ricotta, actually, in, in retrospect. Oh, that w probably would have been really smart. That probably would have made that a lot thicker. Drained the ricotta and the, uh, the sour cream would have made it better. All right, Let's Corey and Matt, who wants a pierogi? Eight-minute timer. Right, well, All right, which ones are yours and which ones are mine? Um, I believe... The worrisome one was mine. This is one of yours? Yep. Okay. I think this... You know what? I think everyone except for one of them is yours. No, no. We added four of oh, each, Oh, yeah, remember? right. That this, one's yours, Yeah, that's one of my terrible ones. <laughs> this is your ricotta friend. Yeah, yeah. Hand me those two. Okay. All right. Matt. Do you want onions or bacon or sour cream on your pierogi? Onions. Onions. Excellent. Corey, I know how you like them. Everything. All right. Matt, do you want to come around here? We'll do some taste testing together. Okay. This will be quite fun. Get some sour cream on there, if that's your jam. Sour cream is not a jam. Milk jam. All right. So it looked a little leaky, but the ricotta it did hold together. Ooh, good. I have one ricotta in there, so I'm excited to see how that turns out. Oh, the ricotta one's good. Did you get potato or ricotta? Corey, you want to come on back and? Ricotta one. Is it? Right, the white. They're all white. All the filling oh. is white. Here, let's trade. Oh, this one does look like a ricotta one, maybe. You just can't, can't tell by color. All right, just need to get you a bit of mm. onion. They're all good. Yeah, that's not bad. I don't know about the dough. Oh, I think the dough turned out fine for a handmade dough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they cut like normal produce. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. When I think of a pierogi, I think of a chewy dough. Mm. Like, it's a dense, chewy kind of thing. I'm beginning to wonder if I should take the, the beginning of my stream tomorrow to just make the rest of the uh, pierogies out of that dough. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Yeah. I think, that, w I think mm. that bit's yours. Hey, Corey, what do you think? Corey approves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like the, the filling it might actually be a little light. Mmm, okay. Like there's not enough, or you, know, you need a bigger cup to cut out the circle. <laughs> I just need to make bigger pierogies, is what you're saying. I think yeah. Sarah did say that it was like, uh, it would be like, uh, Mm. Like a four inch circle? Ooh. Is that the ricotta? Yep. The ricotta's quite oh, salty was... and good. Mm. Oh, I can see why you don't bother with potato, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing about this that you'll notice, although it may have been what Ian did. This is a food for if you like salt. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I might have oversalted the ricotta just a bit, but that can be fixed by putting more ricotta and cottage cheese in the mix. Yeah. Mm. 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 Well, well, we have more pierogies. Mm -hmm. They're coming in four minutes. Perfect. You got one floater there. Yep. Oh. And we got one left in there. Who's? I think that's one of mine. Do you want to try? Sure. I think they're all basically probably the same. Yeah. They're all great. There's a look. There's a look to our, our, our styles, but... Are, are you looking for more pierogies? Yes. We'll br I'll bring you more pierogies. <laughs> There's a reason why dumplings and pierogies are a type of food that was designed by pretty much every civilization. Yeah, every every civilization has their their form of a uh, a dough wrapped filling. And everyone is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed with these pierogies. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we had a moment of panic there when we were dealing with the dough. I was definitely out. panicked for a while. But I think much like... So I found... And this is just me working with Robin Hood flour. Mm -hmm. I found I need to use more of it than I do of any other type. Really? Like, just the brand of flour? Just, just more than the recipe ever asks for. It's the same thing with my pizza dough. Interesting. It's, it's very odd. But yeah, we got there. And I think it's to the point where I could actually, I, I could be happy. Well, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm going to test it later on when I freeze this dough and see what it's like doing the rest of it. Oh, you're going to freeze the dough? Yeah. That's bold. Because I don't know if I'm going to uh, have time to do it tomorrow. But maybe this, no, you know what? I, that's the only time I have. Whee. Well, my gingerbread turned out really well. Oh, wow, that looks lovely. Want to try some? I would love to. Thank Who you. wants a slice of gingerbread? Oh, oh wow. Just warm like this is. Corey? Mm. Here, send this over that way. Kathleen, this is spectacular. Oh, good recipe. The, the crust along the top mm -hmm. is j just that little bit of crispy sugar to it. I timed the cooking well. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know what I'd serve this with? Vanilla ice cream. That's a good one. I was just trying to think of what could be like. Or maybe just some, just some whipped cream. Whip, whip, yeah. I was thinking a uh, an ice. Mm -hmm. Just a very, very light icing would just be decadent. Mm. 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 Soft. Mm hmm. Well leavened. Now, it's warm, so that does affect the texture slightly. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I would like to add a couple tablespoons more butter to this to this recipe. Well, Kathleen, you'll be happy to know that if I were to eat that cold, I'd be adding a couple tablespoons of butter to it, but just in spread form. Oh, like the people who butter banana bread. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I would heck and butter this, yeah. Yeah, this would be really good with butter on it if that's your jam. I might add a little bit more butter to yeah. the actual mixture Do just not to add make jam. it a little richer. Ooh, jam no. might not be bad. No, if you could find some sort of a like a ginger preserve, mm. that would ew, be ew, ew. habanero. Oh, the habanero jelly. I feel like what would be really good in here is if you cut up some candy ginger and mixed it into the oh, uh, yes. into the batter. But this turned out great. That recipe is available online. Just search for spiced gingerbread loaf. It's not mine. <laughs> Ooh, mini cheese is apple butter. Apple butter, good too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we, we do know that ginger marmalade is a real thing. I like buying it. It's delicious. <laughs> okay. All right, are those pierogues done? That's eight minutes, and that looks... They're floaty. Perfect. Ooh, these ones are definitely delicate. Let's get those out and let those drain, and then get the rest of them in. Sounds good. This is great. We're going to have a little pierogi mukbang here. Yeah. This is good. I can finish editing the uh, panelists after this. I'll be <laughs> full, of, full of delicious pierogies. It's always easier to cook when you're cooking for a show. All right. I believe um, many of mine are the ricotta? the ricotta ones. This one is certainly ricotta, and I overfilled it, so we'll see if it stays together. Best to do that in the last batch, then. Yeah. Some of my first ones are here. Oh, this one's ricotta, too. You can tell because it's, like, quite gooey. <laughs> yeah, these yeah. sort of remind me of cooking ravioli and that you want to be delicate about it. I may take that container and just upturn it in a strainer with some cheesecloth just to get the residual water out of it. I think they would hold together really nicely. Yeah. 
All right. Eight minute timer. And now we have the office has fresh gingerbread loaf. That's kind of nice. <laughs> We've got a lot of Christmas baking in here. Jacob came by and yeah, he brought he brought uh, he brought Rice Krispie squares, huh. and uh, Ashley always does some Christmas mm -hmm. baking. I mean, we we're we're expecting that like terrible people. Yeah, like like entitled bastards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's divvy out these pierogies to our hungry hungry techs here. Let's take Corey back to the pierogi zone. <laughs> <laughs> Would you so kindly uh, put some sour cream and bacon on those? Hell uh, yes, I can. Does Matt have a plate on the go here? Corey, how much sour cream do you like? A lot? One, one spoon per. One spoon per. I mean, like, you don't have to eat it all, so. <laughs> what do you mean, have to? And then, Matt, how do you like your pierogies? Okay. Thank you. Done. Ah, pierogies. Kathleen, can I offer you the princely pierogi? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, right. thank you. You are welcome. And toss me that gingerbread uh, plate there. Thank you. Oh, here. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Boop. So I've had one pierogi barebacked. I think I like them with the uh, with the toppings. Did you get any onion? Ah, good. Ooh, the princely pierogi is a is a potato pierogi. Mm-hmm. Mmm. That one's nice. Oh, let's do it hand style. Mm -hmm. Nah. Sarah, we have yet to break a, a pierogi. We are pierog... We are pierogies? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to put pro into pierogi, and it's already there. <laughs> it, pro-rogi would be a very different thing entirely. No, we don't want a pro-rogi parliament. <laughs> yeah, that nice thin dough is good. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. My mustache has been properly sour creamed. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Everything is right in the world. Great. Well, we got one more batch of pierogies here to get through. It's going to take another five minutes. As soon as Corey is available to move her hands, I suggest maybe we should go through uh, what's coming up in the coming week on the channel. Mm. Oh. Starting tomorrow. Christ. Uh, that's me. Jacob and I are coming back and we're doing, we're resuming the misery that is Oz Mafia on Now Kiss. Mm. Oh, what a, what a wretched game. Oh, no. Uh, then it's the crapshoot. I believe we have it scheduled to film two, edit one. Okay. And of course, in the evening, it's a Friday night paper fight as usual. They'll, they'll be playing with the, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a Card Kingdom Cube. Oh, Drafting how exciting. Out of that. Special product. Then on Saturday, Adam's going back into Dark Could 2. Which means more golf. Yeah, could, could he be golfing? He pro probably will he be. He will be golfing. And then Loading Radio Live rounds out the afternoon on Saturday. But we've got to get up early in time for a Cam and Ian Christmas where we'll be unwrapping the scotch and, well, putting the scotch inside of us. This metaphor broke down really quickly. You're just going to sit there and drink scotch quietly. Yes. That, that's, that's all it is. That sounds fantastic. And then, of course, on Sunday at 4 p.m., directly after the Camden and Christmas, we'll be playing Santa Rockstar HD on Rhythm Cafe. But on Monday... Oh, it's the exciting conclusion of a, of, a, of a fate game featuring me and Ian and Ben and Cameron and Serge. Mm -hmm. Winter and, Peasantries. That's right. There's some, someone's been systematically destroying the non-copyright infringing winter solstice trees, and it's up to us to find out. Who did it and why they're doing it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, on Tuesday, nine o'clock returns in the morning at nine a.m. with Rebellious Duno, and then New Day Tuesday. Maybe there might be some changes in the schedule, so let's just stop there. Yeah, keep an eye on LoadingReadyRun.com 
for all the great shows, both pre-recorded and improvised in nature in our schedules there too, so you can find out what's going on. Check us out on Twitter at Loading Ready Run. We're not on Mastodon, but that's for reasons. The reason being that we don't want to be on Mastodon. Too many social networks. Yeah, that's all it really is. What's the scotch this year? I don't know. It came in mail time, though. Yeah, the scotch. Uh, you know what? I'm going to wait until we start to talk about that. Yeah. That suddenly... It's a surprise. Yeah. You'll, you'll get to see what the scotch is. So this year there's talking on Kamini and Christmas. That's the joke. So you're not going to tell anyone what you're drinking? Oh, figuring it out based on... Uh, figuring it out based on bottle shape and whatnot is always a good... Uh, a good fun game for us to play. Mm. Yeah. All right. How are those? How much longer do we have on the program? We timer? have two minutes and twenty-one seconds right, left well, on Brogies. Let's start welcoming subs. I then. think that's a good idea. We of course, I'd like to thank everyone who has chosen to support us, either by just being here in the channel and hanging out while we do our cooking thing, or those of you who go over to late night dub fight. Dot, wow. How did that come out? I was going to be like, what's going on here? But Those of you who go to patreon.com slash loading ready run, we deeply appreciate your support there. It helps keep the lights on. But we would especially like to thank those of you who chose to support us by dropping your subscriptions and your bits here on twitch.tv. We Corey, appreciate it. And you. Who are our lovely, lovely subscribers today. It's do the what now? Who's been subscribed for 37 months in a row? Thank you. Ooh, thank you as well to Darokin, who subscribed already for 57 months. That's big numbers. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's your friend Lady Lay, who's a new subscriber. Thank you. Astani Astanius has subscribed for nine months. Thank you so much for your continued support. Hey, it's Jovinius, Jovinius Maximus. Who I've seen around before, and they've resubscribed. So thank you so much. Poet Marar, that's right. Yep, five months. Thank you so much. Hey, Forsaken Four Hundred One has been here for eleven months. That's almost one year. And Shattered Shamrock is back for their ninth month. Thank you so much for that continued support. Wondermoo has been here for sixty-four months. That is a lot, a lot of months. Thank you so much for your support. Got to thank Anatashi, who's a brand new subscriber. Welcome to the channel, and thank you for your support. Hey, Dark Lord Stratos, you've been here for 14 months. All of them delightful, I hope. Mm -hmm. Marshakado is a brand new subscriber as well. Thank you as well for joining. And Awaba Jack has been here for 14 months. Thank you, Awaba Jack. Gotta thank Kilren Cray for four months of subscription. Welcome back. Yay, and uh, as well as Ryback Gaming. Feed me more pierogies. Five months. Mr. Nibbles, 36 months. Thank you for that resub. Also, Scar Red Tiger, 30 months. Thank you for your resub. How about I read you, Scoop? Okay. Uh, and Dormus, three months. Thank you so much for your support. And also, Ark of the Conclave, five months. Wow, Ooh, that's amazing. Great. Not as amazing, though, as Mennonite 42. Actually, that's not true. Everybody's amazing in their own way. Mennonite 42 has been here for 32 months. That's how amazing they are. Equally amazing. The Foul Clerk, who returns for the 10th month. Thank you for your continued support, the Foul Clerk. But also, Burger Tariff. Don't make me choose. You're all so beautiful and wonderful and amazing. Just accept the username. Six months of amazing. How about Bears of Insanity? That's also six months of delight. And Lagodrit, who's been here for 17 months of oh. joyous anticipation. Lagodrit. And Dashiel, who subscribed for 45 months in a row. Thank you so much for every for your support. And hey, thanks for 250 bits. Hey, from Hey Lucky Annie. And if you are going to give bits, remember hashtag charity in this mm -hmm. month because Twitch is once again running back their uh, their bits for charity campaign. So. 20% of all bits you give go to, what's the name of the disaster relief charity? Uh, I was talking about it earlier today. There's a hash bank, man, for it too. It's real relief, ready, ready relief, oh, something I feel relief. Oh, so bad. It helps people who have been in, afflicted by disasters yeah. uh, all it, over the world. It's a good cause. It's a good cause. So if you're going to give direct bits. Direct relief. Anyway, direct relief, thank you. If you're going to give bits, just put hashtag charity on it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's extras. Hey, got one more piece of business here to finish up before we go tonight. Um, hey, we're coming to PAX. Not us specifically, no. but Loading Ready Run is coming to PAX South 
in the brand new year. And That's we right. are bringing with us... Some new merch. Exactly. Like, are your hands clean? Yeah. It's right over there. Oh. I've been very excited about this piece of, of, uh, piece of equipment. If okay. you're a fan of... Of game, us? Yeah, of, uh, if you're a fan of us... And our faces. Our faces. And a little... Uh, and play mats. Yeah. And, and, I'm and, not going to put it down because everything you know, here is really dirty. But, but a little fandom... I mean, have you ever wondered what we would look like if we were more JoJo? Yeah, J just a little bit more. It would look like more. this. We have these play mats yeah. uh, that, that have some really great JoJo styled art of all of us doing our stands, mm -hmm. question mark? Uh, no, these are just poses. Oh, we're Don't just worry. posing? <laughs> look at how great we all look. Oh, it's very fantastic. One. It's fantastic. And you can buy one either at store.loadingreadyrun.com or should you be so good as to come visit us at PAX South in Bandland, you can purchase one of those there as well. And Lego Drip, or Xeranos just subscribed. Thanks for getting oh. in there right under the wire, Xeranos. Thanks so much, Xeranos. All right. Right, well, that brings us to the end of today's broadcast day. It's been absolutely fun doing this with you here again, as usual, Kathleen. Thank you, Ian. I love cooking with you. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, always it fun a, to try some new things. Even if it is a huge mess. Well, we'll get, we'll get it cleaned up. We'll Hopefully. all work together. And just like we're going to enjoy these pierogies together. Indeed. I can't wait for this delicious delicious ricotta adventure thanks so much everyone for watching tonight we will see you next time ever forward never learning